Hey y'all, Grandma Rose here. I just got in from oh, feeding my chickens, letting them out. They've been letting me know for a, a little while that it was time for me to, to get them out of the coop and to give them some food. So while I went and I, while after I fed them, I usually feed them in this basket. They're kind of crazy, but I guess it's not crazy at all, but I'm keeping their food in the, in the back of my SUV as we have had pigs around and the pigs have been eating their food, so I keep it under lock. Not lock and key, but the door's closed, the pigs can't get in there. Anyway, so after I fed the pigs, I went out to the... <laughs> no, I did not feed the pigs. After I fed the chickens, I had an empty basket, went in and I collected eggs. So I got, how many? I got five eggs. Do you see what else is in here? So I didn't just collect eggs, even though I, I have lovely eggs. This one, that, that's an olive egg. That's, it's a, a green egg. So I've just got a brown egg, and here's a white egg. White egg and a brown egg, a couple of brown eggs, and a blue egg and a green egg. I have a multicolored flock. But when every time I go out and I, I feed the chickens, I come back, I almost always come back with at least this many feathers. Look at this thing. Isn't this thing gorgeous? Look at that feather. Can you see that? Isn't that pretty? And here is a hackle feather from my, one of my Dominique roosters. And then just a white, just a white feather from one of my white chickens. This one probably is from my, one of my Wyandots. I've got a couple of Wyandot roosters. And here's a wing feather from one of the, one of the uh, Dominiques. And a long feather. Okay, this is just a, another gray feather. Some of them are dirty. They need to be washed, but a little bit of soap and water will do wonders. And here's a really pretty black feather. You see the iridescence in it? It doesn't look very pretty right now because it's been in the weather for a few days. But all it's going to take is a little bit of water and it'll, it'll be pretty again. So this is how I am collecting feathers. And if any of you who are into fly tying know what a treasure this is. This is what we would call a down feather. And people who tie flies would call that marabou or chickaboo since it came from chickens. It's a white one. It's more chickaboo. A lot of feathers have a secondary feather attached to them. I believe one of the names for this feather is called an after feather. I have a story that's an unpleasant story to go with this. I'll tell you in a minute. So yep, there we go. Here's another. There's another one of the Dominique feathers. It could either be from the rooster, I do have a Dominic hen, so that could be one of the hen's feathers. But they're just pretty. I'm gonna sit, ah, I think I'll sit out here on the porch. Sit on my swing for a minute. You see what I've been doing? Oh dear, oh, I'll tell you the story about that I, I read about the after feathers. I couldn't remember what the name of those were. After feather. After feather. Oh, is that in here again? Where is that one? Is that the one? Yeah, there it is. Here's an after feather. There's another, there's another name for it. A more scientific name for it. Called, what is it called? Uh, Hyporachus. This is a dirty feather, not a good. Well, it's going to wash. That's just dirt. It's nothing, nothing more than dirt. It's not, not chicken poop, just dirt. Um, anyway, the quill. Most people, you know, we've people have heard of people using quill pens where you cut off the angle, cut off at an angle, a, a feather to make a pen. The hollow inside, so the ink will be taken up into it, and then it releases it, and then you dip it in again and again and and so on. It's only the part at the end is called the quill. This part going up is, is called the rachis. So, hypo, think of hypodermic under your skin. 
Hypo means under. Dermic, meaning dermis or epidermis. Think about that. Your epidermis, there's that same word, dermic. So hypodermic, it means under your skin. A little trivia. But at the same time, if this part of the feather is called the rachis, I'll turn it over. If this part of the feather is called the rachis, then it makes sense for this feather, this after feather, to be called a hypo rachis, under the rachis. Makes sense to me, and I'm sure it made sense to whoever, whoever the crazy person was who figured out this terminology. And I've gotten my dress dirty. But anyway, let me tell you the story about feather after feather after feather. I googled it. I had seen in one of the backyard chickens or something, I was looking for the scientific name, the, the technical name, because I knew there was one. I had, I had heard it someplace. So I googled after feather. And I actually was able to find the name Hyperachus. But one of the articles that came up was a story about Adolf Hitler. Now this is just, this man was an evil man. I mean, we all know this. But the story was that Adolf Hitler went to a meeting. Of, I don't know who the meeting, who was meeting with him. But to the meeting, he brought a live chicken. And as he sat there in the, in the meeting, he plucked. Feather after feather after feather, and this is where after feather turned up in my Google search. He plucked feather after feather from that live chicken until the live chicken was bald. Can you imagine the torture that he did to that chicken by plucking it alive? It just makes me sick to think about it. But yeah, there you go. You didn't expect to hear a story about Adolf Hitler in this talk, but yeah. That just made my skin crawl. It just made me sick thinking about it. But yeah, there's that was one of the terms that came up when I when I did a Google search for after feather. Thought I had to tell you that I had to tell somebody that because it just made me made my skin crawl, it made me sick at my stomach. Because I know it's painful to a, to a chicken to to lose feathers. In fact, my dog caught a, a chicken the other day. Fortunately, I was able to to retrieve the chicken. And I'm, I don't know if I have another video that I have, I don't believe I've released yet, and I'm tell about it. I'll tell about it here too. How I got the, the dog to... Here goes the truck with some kind of transmission problem. Anyway, so I was, uh, let the dog out in the backyard to do his business, and the backyard is fenced, so I didn't expect there to be a chicken back there, but there was. The chicken had flown over the fence or it had managed to get in the yard somehow or another. So the dog immediately found the chicken and he dashed after it and it ran to the fence like it was gonna, gonna fly over, but it didn't fly fast enough and the dog caught it. Well, he had his prize. And he, you know, I don't think, he doesn't realize that they are food. He just wants to play with them. And he's a big dog and he plays rough. And so he caught the chicken in his mouth, the back of the chicken, and he ran around the yard with it. And every time I would try to get close, he would run in the opposite direction. And he ran and ran and ran. And every now and then he would put the chicken down and readjust it in his mouth and pick it back up again. And I just knew that he was gonna bite that chicken and hurt the chicken. So I opened the back door and I went inside and I called him in. And he came in and he brought the chicken with him into the house. And he let him he let it go and the chicken ran off and I was able to tie him up and get him away. So then I was able to get the chicken and to and to be sure that she wasn't hurt. We came out in the, and we came out in, and sat in the chair on the front porch. And I held her and she was breathing through her mouth. She was really, oh, she was terrified, poor thing. Of course she was. She lost quite a few feathers. So this is where the story is going. Uh, she, she wasn't bleeding, thank goodness, but she did lose quite a few feathers. And it has to be painful to have a feather torn out. It just can't be painless. It has, it has to be painful. But there was no blood, there were no, there were no tooth marks. 
And after she sat in my lap for a few minutes and we talked to each other, you know, right. But uh, she sat there and she was breathing through her mouth with her, with her mouth open. And finally she started clucking and she kind of ruffled her feathers a little bit and she closed her mouth and she flew away. But she was fine, but it took her a little while to, to recover from the trauma of being caught by the dog. And again, yesterday afternoon, she was back in that yard again. Luckily, I looked out and I didn't let the dog out, but she didn't learn her lesson. And one of these days, she's probably gonna get caught and I'm not gonna see it. And that's gonna make me sad because she's one of my favorite chickens. But there's my chicken story. My two chicken stories, all about feathers. So bye y'all, see you next time.